Welcome to the What's So Smart podcast, powered by the Huntsville-Madison County Chamber of Commerce. I'm your host, Clark Dunn. Huntsville, Alabama is known as a smart place, but really, what's so smart about it? In this podcast, we will talk to the leaders of Huntsville's economic and cultural development to answer that question. From rockets to genomics, from cyber to music, What's So Smart will explore the visionary and data-driven initiatives that make Huntsville so smart. Stay connected with us on all your social media platforms at A Smart Place. You can watch the full conversations on our YouTube channel at Huntsville, Alabama, USA, and be sure to subscribe wherever you listen. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we hope you enjoy this episode of the What's So Smart podcast. Welcome back to the What's So Smart podcast. Today, I have the opportunity to sit down with Chris Udall of Generator. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so I'm excited to kind of dive in and talk a little bit about the work you do with Generator. But before we get into that, uh, you have a pretty unique background. Talk a little bit about your journey to get here to Huntsville. Yeah, it's it's probably somewhat of a non-traditional uh, start. So I started uh, uh, as a Mormon missionary, actually, in southern Mexico. Grew up in Arizona, ended up living in Mexico for a couple of years. Uh, saw quite a lot of conflict, as you can imagine, mm. uh, which inspired me to get a super useful degree okay. in Polynesian cultural anthropology and peace building. Okay. And and you did this degree in, my, in Hawaii, correct? In Hawaii, yeah. Wow. You can imagine everyone was clamoring to hire me. I mean, just <laughs> knocking on my door. Uh, every industry, it didn't matter. Industry agnostic. Everyone wanted me. So naturally, I went into entrepreneurship okay. uh, after I graduated there and decided to start my first business in the Middle East. So I moved to the Kingdom of Jordan. Figured there might be some conflict there. We could do some innovation around helping uh, youth get into entrepreneurship over joining ISIS and Hezbollah was the the goal. So we worked in refugee camps that were located outside of uh, established refugee camps, so generally in the south uh, of the kingdom there, Uh, which led me to realize I started a business and I was bad at business. Uh, So I went to Oxford, got a certificate in social entrepreneurship, and then ended up at the University of Notre Dame. How? Uh, to get an MBA. And then how how did Huntsville get on your radar as, as, as a place to call home now? Yeah, I was working as a growth strategy consultant in Seattle, um, as well as with a startup in robotics, and wasn't really working. Wife had some, some health scares, so I was like, gosh, I got to get on better insurance. Started applying around, was going to take a job finance at SpaceX when a LinkedIn Easy Apply came up for the role I'm in now. Okay. And uh, this job was a heck of a lot more fun for a significantly less amount of money. <laughs> and so what was that experience like, you know, traveling the world and being living in so many different unique places to then now move to Huntsville with your wife? And like, what was that initial experience? And what was your, um, like, the, the first, like, oh, this is Huntsville? Yeah, I mean, generally, we don't fit in anywhere, right? Because we feel like a revolving door of cultures, Um not having lived in one place longer than two years, but what we found in Huntsville was that was the story for quite a number of people, Mm. Uh, whether that was through military service, government service, uh, everyone seemed to have this, we're not from here, we have adopted many different uh, cultural attributes, and so we really found a place where we felt uh, at home. Mm. And so to talk a little bit about your role uh, with Generator and kind of what Generator is for those who might not know. Yeah, so I'm the managing director of the Hudson Alpha AgTech Accelerator powered by Generator, uh, which is a generator program specifically built for Hudson Alpha to invest in agricultural technology companies from around the world, bring them to Huntsville for 12 weeks. Uh, what Generator does as a venture capital firm is we invest usually $100,000 into a startup. We bring them to a city for three months and expect them to grow 20% month over month. Mm. So we work with them, giving them access to mentors and investors. Uh, Really, we don't structure like a a business school concept. It's very concierge. So whatever the founder needs to grow, whatever rock they're hitting, uh, we're going to try and build the pathway to get through that or find the people who have the answers to get uh, over that hurdle and we'll make that happen for them. Yeah. Uh, so we've seen just in the last 18 months out of our 13 companies we've brought to Huntsville, we've already helped them raise uh, $6.6 million. Wow. So we're really happy with this success. We have a, uh, a very, very lucrative return on investment for those who, who support us on the investment side. So we're, we're pretty excited. Yeah. And so when you, when you get these uh, ag tech companies, these, these startups to come to Huntsville, what is sort of the, their initial response of like what Huntsville is like? Does it, does, is their expectations met or is it exceeded? 
uh, as, as you've seen a variety of different companies from probably all across the country that have come here? Well, I, as, as you can imagine, I give out free money. So I'm everyone's best friend online, mm. and they love to email me and cold call my cell phone um, until they find out they have to move to Alabama for three months. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's when they hit their hiccup. So most of my job is actually selling the city of Huntsville mm. and the state to people in California and New York uh, and overseas to come build their business here. Um, oftentimes, I'll tell them we're West Atlanta on the phone before I mention <laughs> we're in Alabama yeah. or South Nashville. <laughs> um but the shift happens very quickly once they get here, once they meet the mentors that are here locally in this town. Uh, we've had at least three of them now uh, relocate large portions, if not their entire business, to, to wow. Huntsville because of the, the cost of living, the access to, to talent, mm. um, and just the way this community is hungry to support people starting businesses. Yeah. I think that's... Uh, for a town that thrives on on DOD and, and large contracts to have a, a scrappy startup uh, is very exciting for, for a lot of folks to get involved in. Yeah. And so thinking through this, you, you, uh, as you've been at this role at Hudson Alpha with Generator, um, is, there, is there any unique stories of these ag tech companies that have come through uh, that stands out among the rest? Oh, I have too many. <laughs> uh, I think right now one of my favorites is... Uh, this would be less of an acceleration and more of a resuscitation because this was a company that was started in 2008 that went under during the housing crisis. The founder was a retired Vietnam vet colonel. He had sold his last business for $500 million, was living in Florida, living his best life. Um, he sought me out, came out to Huntsville, pitched me. I said, no, <laughs> this, this idea is weird. No, thank you. He pitched me again. But he had taken the feedback I gave him and implemented it, ended up taking him up to Notre Dame to compete, and uh, they really beat him up up there mm. uh, with his business model. But I kept watching him take the feedback. So when he applied uh, this most recent time, I was ready to invest. Yeah. Um, we put in $100,000. Two weeks into the program, we found out that his particular product, which is a biostimulant to grow... Uh, crops with natural nitrogen found in human hair and chicken feathers um, also deterred deer deprivation. So the deer stopped eating the crop, which okay. is a this billion dollar problem yeah. just in the state of Alabama. Um, once we found that out, he can't make enough of his deer wall, he calls it, mm. fast enough to sell. Wow. So he went from uh, when we invested in him, like a $1.3 million valuation to a $30 million valuation in the span of, of about 18 weeks. Wow. And so do you see through the, pe the people that come through generator that this is like a second career that they've now gone into, or do you see some of these, uh, ag tech, uh, startups that are, you know, this is like, this is what they've only been doing. This has like been their, been their life, so, so to speak up until this moment. I would say specifically for ag, it's almost always a second career unless they're coming from the academic space. Um, because ag, you know, your hooded college kid doesn't wake up in his dorm and say, you know what's really cool? Farming. <laughs> I'm just going to start farming today. Um, they generally associate farming with that one photo, the dude with the yes. pitchfork, you <laughs> know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Um, so you get folks who are either retired military, they're retired industry, they buy a hobby farm, mm -hmm. uh, or they start seeing the problems with food insecurity globally through travels, and then they start an ag company. Or you'll get your academic who studies agriculture, is studying genomics, or is studying you know, microbial biology and realizes they can come up with a new seed coding that's just fantastic science, and then they start uh, an ag company. So those are usually the two types of founders we see. Yeah. And so, I mean, thinking through your, I mean, your entrepreneurial journey itself, I mean, starting that first thing over in Jordan and then, you know, the different things you've worked at, do you think that plays a pivotal, a, a key role in the work you do today, being able to have that experience on your shoulders of being an entrepreneur and being a small business owner? Oh, absolutely. I mean, from being a farmer in Montana to being a nonprofit uh, founder, I am a master at not making money. <laughs> I know so many ways not to make a profit that I can tell my entrepreneurs what to avoid. Uh, and then how to make money through, uh, you know, more for-profit endeavors. Yeah. 
How, how has the ag tech scene with Generator being here at Hudson Alpha and it being here in Huntsville grown other elements and other uh, research opportunities, maybe within the Hudson Alpha campus, but maybe just within the, within the region of North Alabama? Yeah, I think one of my favorite things to watch is how the local farmers get involved mm. um, in providing test plots for some of our companies. Uh, it's really fascinating to see how many people want to get involved with agriculture, um, especially in the DOD space. I mean, the mm. DOD buys everything, but we often don't think that they also need someone to mow their lawn yeah. or spray their weeds <laughs> or apply certain fertilizers. They own quite a bit of land. And so a lot of the mentorship that's happened in Huntsville is to help these ag companies get in that pipeline or get paper clipped to another company that has a DOD contract and start generating some revenue fairly quickly. And it's, it's a slower cycle. Uh, but it's a very unique offering. And then the relationship uh, with the aerospace industry, yeah. right? With NASA being one of our close neighbors, uh, we certainly get a lot of mentors from that space. And we've even sent one of our companies to space, um, our company ShipShape. And we organized a launch for them where they were paid uh, to fly to the ISS to uh, test some seed varieties, see if they can get stronger root systems and you know, tomatoes and, and lettuce that they're growing in their vertical hydroponic wow. farms. So thinking like, I mean, obviously the impact that, that you've had with uh, Generator here in Huntsville and at Hudson Alpha over the course of your time there, what do you kind of see the future looking like for ag tech? Uh, maybe, maybe within Generator or maybe just within the, the Huntsville area as a whole? So I think Huntsville has a very unique opportunity to be the capital of space agriculture, which sounds funny and hilarious, <laughs> but um, when you think about who controls space with the big the big folks like Lockheed Martin, uh, Boeing, SpaceX, Raytheon, all of these folks, do you want them to grow your food? And most people would say probably not, <laughs> right? They're probably really, yeah. really good at what they do, but they're not really the people I want to grow my heirloom tomatoes yeah. <laughs> um, in this kind of low Earth orbit ecosystem that we're all hoping is being built, right? And we're all... Uh, striving for this low Earth orbit economy, right? Um, certainly changes the the commute and the the transportation time for strawberries to go from California to New York, and the lossage of spoilage um, when you down mass something grown in space to Earth. It's quite a much shorter uh, supply chain, and, and it's all hypothetical. But to get entrepreneurs starting to think further into the future. Um, to leverage technologies that are coming out of NASA to help with agriculture. Agriculture is very behind because we've pushed all of our youth to go into university and we've said, leave the farm, go to school. And they translate that as to farming is not sexy. But space <laughs> agriculture is a way to say, look, farming is sexy as ever. Yeah. And you can farm in space. Um, we like to call our founders who go to space, space farmers. We've got four <laughs> more founders we're hoping to, wow. to send up to space. Uh, here shortly, so stay tuned for that. Yeah, um, but that's that's kind of where I see Huntsville's really unique market opportunity within the United States. Are we going to beat Fargo, North Dakota for agriculture? No, uh, we're not. <laughs> but we can absolutely beat them in uh, in space agriculture. And we can get people excited about space and start paying attention to some of the very serious problems with food insecurity. Which this being a DoD town. Almost all major conflicts start with food scarcity. Uh, you look at the Arab Spring, you look at what's going on in Yemen. If you can control the food supply, if you can keep your people hungry, you can control them, you can persuade them to join militant causes. Um, and food is often the very first and the cheapest alternative to, to war. That often is overlooked because, again, agriculture isn't necessarily the, the coolest industry <laughs> to be a part of, but it really is. Yeah. So thinking, I mean, you've lived in a, a variety of different places, worked with a variety of smart people in smart places. Uh, what do you think, f from your perspective, coming in here in, in, in Huntsville and now the work you do with, with Generator, what makes Huntsville such a smart place? Uh, it's non-orthodox. I think my favorite thing about doing business here is the meetings I go to tend to be very direct. There's not a whole lot of fluff. Mm. Um I think my favorite example would be, I, I had a need to meet with a CEO. He said, I can't meet with you, but uh, if you play video games, pop on Call of Duty and I'll see you at eight o'clock. Wow. So I downloaded Call of Duty and watched a YouTube video on how to play <laughs> that video game. 
And that has expanded into an executive network of people who play Call of Duty at night and do business in the loading screen. Wow. And it's it's a unique aspect of Huntsville that I've never seen anywhere else. It's kind of, you know, I know a lot of people golf, but this you can't play golf at night. <laughs> I mean, you can with the right equipment. But for the most part, um, you know, you can, you can be with your family and have your kids in the room uh, and still do business wow. through video games, which, which I thought was pretty unique. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you taking the last little bit talking about the role and the work you do with Generator. I continue to look forward to kind of the impact it'll have not only uh, in, in the Huntsville area, but also all across the country with the, with the, with the ag tech uh, startups that are coming here. But I appreciate you taking the time to talk with me today. Absolutely. It's been a joy. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the What's So Smart podcast. Stay connected with us on all your social media platforms at A Smart Place. You can watch the full conversations on our YouTube channel at Huntsville, Alabama, USA, and be sure to subscribe wherever you listen. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we hope you enjoyed hearing more about what makes Huntsville so smart.